Hey guys, welcome back to Model Farm Studio. Haymaking is my favorite activity to help out with on my parents' farm, so regardless of whether it's a mower, a rake, or a baler, implements that have to do with making hay are some of my favorites. In this video, I'm going to be sharing the process of transforming a stock 164 scale HNSV rake into a more high detail model that's appropriate for your shelf or diorama. Specifically, the model I'll be dealing with is a BF16HC, which is a 16 wheel V rake, and I'm going to be making that a smaller version which is a 14 wheel BF 14 HC. I'd like to say thank you to both Big Tractor Power and the Iowa Dairy Boys for letting me use some of their footage in my video here to help explain some of the components that I'm building. That being said, if you guys have any questions, as always, please don't hesitate to ask and be sure to check out the description section at the bottom of the video for complete information on raw materials and parts that you're seeing me use on the rig. With that, let's jump into it. Hope you guys enjoy. I was surprised by how much detail this rake had right out of the package. The toy had some nice touches like transfer decals and positionable gauge wheels that were coupled with smooth functioning folding mechanics that actually worked well. Of course some large shiny rivets were required to hold everything together, but that's nothing that some paint couldn't fix. As you can see this rake had 6 rubber wheels and 16 rake wheels, hence the BF16HC naming convention. To begin modifying the rake, I started by removing all 16 of the plastic rake wheels. As you can see, these were really easy to just pull off by hand. The six rubber wheels were next to go. While the two sets of tandem wheels on the rear frame were easy to remove by hand, it was important to be a little bit more careful with the two front gauge wheels to avoid twisting the frame. With all of the wheels removed, it was time for the Dremel tool. I decided to modify my rake from a 16 wheel to a 14 wheel, so I made some cut marks with an X-Acto knife while being careful to preserve the decals on the side. According to h &S literature, a 14 wheel rake will give me a raking width of up to 28 feet. This width would be appropriate to double two rows together from a 13 foot pull type mower that I plan on using. In real life, a 16 wheel rake is basically a 14 wheel, except it has frame extensions to accommodate an additional rake wheel on either side. I used a small file to carefully smooth up the ends. Eventually you'll see me come back with some touch up paint to take care of hiding this bare metal. I ground the Ertl hitch nub off to make way for a more realistic hitch that you'll see me build from styrene. Next I ground off the nubs that held the rake wheels onto the individual arms. I tried to make sure that these points were as smooth as possible to help simplify mounting the new rake wheels. The last step with my Dremel tool was to grind off the spindles that were used to hold the regular wheels on. Since the new rims I used had plastic spacers behind them, I completely removed each of these so that I could easily drill some mounting holes. I used my center pin punch to create a dimple on each of the spots where a spindle used to be. These small indents prevent a drill bit from wandering, which is especially helpful when dealing with a small item like this. Afterwards I used a 1 16th inch drill bit in my pin vise to start each hole and then turned to my cordless drill to finish them out. To increase the level of realism, I used photo etch brass rake wheels that were made by Tractor Fab. As you can see, these provided me with a much greater level of detail that far exceeded what the plastic Ertl wheels offered. I upgraded the rims and tires to more realistic looking spoke wheels from a triple axle underfirth seed tender made by Speccast. As you can see, these popped off easily with my tire puller and the tires could be pulled from the rim by hand. Since you might not have luck finding one of these undercarriages in a junk box like me, or if you don't want to pay the full price to scrap a seed tender, an alternative would be to use the wheels from green light trailers such as these. I painted the rims and rake wheels with ivory spray paint made by Krylon. To make the rake wheels easier to handle, I left them in their sprues. Once the paint dried, I cut the rake wheels out with a razor blade that I didn't care about getting dull. There are side cutters specifically made for cutting objects out of sprues, but some, like the ones that I have, are only designed for plastic, so be sure to take note of what materials they're actually advertised to cut. Regardless, these rake wheels were delicate and easy to bend, especially near the three points where they were connected to the sprues, so it's important to be as gentle as possible. 
Tractor Fab's instructions said to drill holes for pins to mount the rake wheels. However, my thinking was that I had a better shot of lining the wheels up by gluing them directly under the arms instead of trying to drill 14 perfectly straight holes. So as a way of helping me know where the center of each arm was, I added a small dot of black paint to each of them. Since the wheels were delicate to begin with, I decided to wait to install them until I was closer to being finished. Since I was in an intricate painting mood at this point, I decided to cover up the shiny rivets and spots of bare metal, fully knowing that I'd need to go back and do more touch-up in the future. The paint I used was Model Masters Guards Red, which is actually owned by Testers. This turned out to be a pretty close match to the red that Earl used. In real life, the rake wheels on both sides are connected together with rods that allow hydraulic cylinders on the arms to raise and lower them in unison. While there are a number of bushings and brackets that connect all of these components together, I decided just to replicate the connecting rods with some of this 51mm brass rod made by k Precision Metals. After cutting pieces to length, I painted them with some acrylic silver paint. After studying the rake a little more, I got my Dremel tool back out again. To provide some room to attach the rods to the arms, I thought I needed to notch the heads of the rivets that held on the front gauge wheel supports. Eventually I discovered that this wasn't really necessary as the smaller rivets adjacent from these were still in the way and couldn't really be modified that much. You'll see my solution a little bit later in the video, but I still wanted to explain my thought process at this point. I also ground off the bulky SMV sign that was casted on top of the rear frame. This was pretty tedious as I had to carefully navigate my cutting wheel between the rivet heads that were on both sides of this piece. I felt confident enough that if this cut didn't turn out well, the combination of putty, touch-up paint, the new SMV sign, and some static grass on top of it would easily hide any mistakes. I like to attach my SMV signs that I make with a small metal post so I carefully drilled a hole where the old one was. To smooth up this spot, I added some white putty made by Squadron Products. I eventually sanded and then painted this area with the red touch-up paint. Boston Implement is my favorite source for farm toy decals like these SMV signs. I like to stick these on a thin piece of styrene and then cut the excess off with a pair of scissors. What I can't get close enough can be easily sanded off with a small needle file. Since this would be fragile when glued to the post, you'll see me come back and install this a little later on. To keep the rake from unfolding during road transport in real life, a removable metal bar is attached on the front of both arms. These bars are then pinned to holes found on an angled bracket on the main frame just above the tongue. Surprisingly, this bracket was actually casted into the toy, so I drilled a few holes out in it. After a quick mock-up, I discovered that the new tires from the seed tender made the rake sit up quite a bit higher, which meant that the rake wheels would have been further off the ground. To get around this, I installed the original tires on the new rims. You can see the difference between these two tires here. An original tire that Ertl used on this rake is mounted on the rim on the left. On the inside of each rim was a large hunk of plastic to mount the axle rod. This is pretty common to see among high detail toy manufacturers to avoid having a large rivet head on the outside of a rim. However, it can be a challenge when you're reusing these rims as they can stick out too far. To make sure these were pulled in for the correct stance, I used my Dremel tool to sand them down and then drilled the original center holes deeper. This was a tedious process as you can imagine as you have to be really careful not to break through the other side of the rim. After I glued a small piece of 1 16th inch brass into the hole in the back of each rim, I glued the exposed nub into one of the holes that I drilled earlier on the rake. Next I installed the pieces of 51mm brass that I painted silver earlier between the rake wheel arms. My solution to keep these looking straight was to cut them into two pieces and then glue them on either side of the rivet that I ground down earlier. I glued a small piece of a pin into the hole that I drilled between the two rivets where the old SMV sign was that I removed. This served as a post to attach the new SMV sign too. I cut two more pieces of brass tubing to replicate hydraulic cylinders on the arms. On one end of the tubes, I glued a small piece of a pin to replicate the rods. For more detail, I decided to run hydraulic lines from the cylinders to the tongue. On the real rakes, hose clamps hold these lines in place, so I replicated them with several pieces of 1 16th inch square brass tubing. This looked pretty realistic, but also still allowed the rake to fold. I'll add that I intentionally didn't paint these pieces of brass before I glued them on. Painted metal glued to another painted metal surface can be problematic, as it can become brittle and break off rather easily, not to mention it can often take or leave a chunk of paint. 
Also sure that I used my pin vise to drill out the insides of these brass pieces to make it easier for the two hoses to pass through them. At the other end of the cylinders, I glued on a mounting bracket that I made from a piece of 1 16th inch brass. After gluing the cylinders to the arms, I attached a small piece of styrene between this bracket and the connecting rods to loosely resemble the linkage used to raise and lower the rake wheels. To help hide the bulk of the arms that held the rake wheels, I picked up some tiny compression springs on eBay. I applied a dab of glue to each of the arms and then carefully positioned each spring in place. While the glue dried, I added stops to the other end of the hydraulic cylinders. It was easier to attach these after the cylinders were glued on to avoid the challenge of getting them perfectly lined up with the other brass brackets that I installed earlier. Afterwards, I painted the springs with some dark brown acrylic paint to resemble some rust. If you recall me mentioning earlier, on the real rakes, two bars are used to lock the arms to the mainframe as a safety feature. A distinctive component of this setup are square plates on the end of the arms, so I fashioned these out of some styrene. After these were secured in place, I drilled a hole in the center of each of them to mount one end of the bars. To make the bars, I used some of this 1 16th inch white styrene coated wire. While this material is great because of its flexibility, sharp bends will usually cause the coating to crack off. In this case, I actually wanted the coating to be removed to make it easier for me to take the bars on and off the rake. As you can see, I bent these so that one end mounted into the holes in the styrene squares that I installed in the previous clip, while the other ends were bent to reach into the holes that I drilled on the angled bracket located on the tongue. So while on the subject of the tongue, I like to make mine out of thin styrene, as you can see here. For any implement, I just drill a small hole out, cut the piece to length, and then glue it together, and basically repeat. For weird angles like this one, I often sandwich another small piece of styrene between the two pieces, just to help provide some extra strength. At this point, the detail pieces that I added were ready to be painted. I applied some black paint on the brass squares, the cylinders on the arms, the plastic tube that held the operator's manual, which was a nice touch of detail that Ertl added, and the hitch. I applied some of the red paint that I had out earlier to each of the square plates on the end of the arms and then in the center of each of the rims as well. I installed each rake wheel by placing a small dab of glue on an arm. Then I lined up the hole in the center of the wheel with the black dot of paint that I added earlier. As I've said before, whenever I'm customizing a piece, I try to think ahead about when each component should get installed. The more fragile it is, the later I'll try to attach it. These wheels were no exception as even the slightest bump could bend one of the thin fingers. I'll also mention in case you missed it that there are actually two different wheels in each of these packs as the direction of the teeth does matter. Technically, you could flip the wheels to match the direction of the other ones, but the finely detailed bolts on the hubs would be missed. The SMV sign required just a small dab of glue on the metal post to hold it in place. I'll address painting the back of this sign a little later on. Now it was time to run the hydraulic lines through the brass squares that I glued on. For hoses, I like to use this 0.5mm bead and jewelry cord that's made by Stretch Magic. This was actually fairly easy to do, it just took a little patience to route them and then connect them to the two cylinders. I painted the back of the SMV sign with black paint to suggest that it had a plastic backing since it was a newer rake. Silver could also be appropriate here for an older version to resemble galvanized metal. Just like the SMV signs, I also use a lot of these warning label decals from Boston Implement. These are a really easy way to enhance the detail on a project. I cut these out, went around the edges with the black sharpie, and then stuck them on the hitch area based on where the real versions were located. I used the same red touch-up paint on the two locking bars to match the rest of the rake. I'm guessing that a lot of these bars end up in the back of machine sheds or barns, as not many are attached to the used rakes that I saw in the online photos. Anyways, I like to use my third hand for tasks like this, but a small ball of putty would also be handy to stick them to as they dry. 
To adjust the width of the windrow that's being raked together, a small hand crank located on the back frame is fixed to a screw that runs inside the top tube. To replicate this, I bent a handle out of a piece of wire. I then glued a small piece of brass tubing on the end of the frame to give it something to mount onto. I wanted the rake to look used, so I applied some dark brown acrylic paint on the tips of the teeth and the centers of the rake wheels to resemble light rust. As a final detail, I added a 3D printed jack to the rake. To prevent it from interfering with the tractor when the rake is hooked up, I decided to make it removable. To do this, I glued a small piece of brass tubing to the side of the frame. While the glue dried, I painted one of the jacks gray and then cut it out of the sprue. Basically, the small nub on the side of the jack sat inside of the tubing. So that completes this build. I really enjoy taking a stock toy like this rake and sprucing it up to be more of a high detail model. That's not to mention that making hay is by far my favorite farming activity, so a rake like this one certainly hits home with me. Hopefully this video gives you inspiration to build your own rake, or perhaps try some of my techniques on the next implement or project that you have at your workbench. As always, please don't hesitate to ask any questions, and be sure to check out the description section for information on where I source the parts that you saw me use. Until next time, thanks for watching.